Have you ever wondered what you could do if you had a home powder-based 3D printer? Well, the people at Center It have one and they've sent me some prints, so let's check them out. Hey everybody, just a quick note from the editing desk before we start here. So just yesterday, Joel Telling released his Lisa Center It box. And if you haven't already seen that video, I'll put a card, pow, right there so that you can see it. So I love the discourse. Joel's opinion about this is slightly different to mine. Not vastly different, obviously. We both are very excited by the possibilities, by, by the lower cost of these printers coming out and what that means for 3D printing in the future. And these are really cool prints. So I hope that you'll watch my video and check his video out and that you can get a full picture about this. It's, it's really fun to have all this discourse. Of course, if they were gear best, people would be complaining about them you know, spamming YouTube, but hey, double standards, it's a thing. All right, let's go on to the video for this. Now, as you probably know, FFF 3D printing isn't the only game in 3D printing. There's a large number of 3D printing technologies that you can use to make your models real. But for the home market, FFF 3D printing has been the cheapest and most reliable. SLA 3D printing or printing with a light curing resin is starting to come out as an alternative, but it is slightly more expensive and deals with chemicals that are hard to work with. Powder-based 3D printing is out there and it allows for some fantastic designs because you don't have to worry about supports. Everything that you print is already well supported in a bed of its own build material that you simply pull the print out of, but it's messy and it's really, really expensive. The people who own these technologies aren't letting them go for anything less than tens of thousands of dollars, but not center it. A company called center. It has created a home desktop, uh, powder based 3d printer, and they sent me a box of prints. And so I want to show some of those to you today. This print is kind of a hyper dodecahedron and it's got it shows fine detail beautiful supports and they even customized it for me before they sent it to me so they were really demonstrating that they're capable of producing a, a model on the fly for for specific uh, uses which means that this didn't take very long to print so I really appreciate them demonstrating that yeah this could make some fantastic promotional items this next piece is just an example of intertwined, twisting, high detailed organic parts. And while I appreciate what it's showing in and of itself, it's so useless. And while I do defend useless prints, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. They also made me, I think, an earbud holder. It seems a little bit big for my pocket, but I may give this a try. And an ornament that was made out of a black powder that when I picked up, I became very aware is made out of a flexible powder. Now, I think, yeah, I'm breaking this as I'm squeezing it, as I'm stressing it. All the very small parts are cracking on this, but the capability to make nice flexible parts are very cool. There's also these parts which are shown to be functional. They come out of the printer with just enough clearance between the parts that they are functional as they come out. And this one actually moves when you blow air, air into it, which opens up the possibility that we could go the other way, attach a motor on here and 3D print a functional fan. They also sent me some Polish candy that's basically caramels, but I don't know, not chewy, kind of grainy, which I don't like caramels, but being chewy like this or being grainy like this actually isn't that bad. It's not getting stuck in my teeth. Good job. Now, looking at these prints, the layer lines are still pretty obvious on these prints. Uh, while they are very fine layer lines, they are layer lines nonetheless. And you can see how this printed and what orientation. In fact, this print, I think, printed like this with the layer lines going up this direction. That's not a bad thing. The layer lines are still very fine. I will also say, though, that all of these prints, every single one of them, have kind of a grainy matte feel to them. They don't feel smooth, injection molded, glossy, but they still 
they're still solid. So despite the fact they feel like sandstone in my hands, they aren't crumbling or falling apart. They are rigid parts. I can't help but wonder if there isn't a post-processing that could be done to them to make them look and feel more like what we'd expect them to feel like. But how good an idea is having a 3D printer in your home and what's the likelihood that you're actually going to be able to buy one of these 3D printers? The center at Lisa starts as a complete set with the printer, some powder to start you with and everything that you need to post process the parts at about $9,000 US, which puts it well, I think, outside the range of a home consumer user. But for a maker space or for a business, it's in that prosumer level. The material is also expensive for it. Rain coming in at about $145 to over $350 for the flexible powder for a two kilogram load of it. Of course, this powder works as its own build material and I think should be able to be recycled until it's all used up. I would like to see one of these printers in action. I would like to get my hands on one and try it out because I'm curious how messy this actually is. I've always heard that powder-based 3D printers were just a mess when you tried to use them, but it looks like and it seems like they've made a fairly enclosed unit that's relatively clean to use. And if they have, I would love to get my hands on this 3D printer and find out what it's capable of. But at $9,000 just to start and at such expensive material, it's not likely that I'll be playing with one in my home. And that might be a good thing considering the fact that the only powders they have are this kind of gray or black. And I know that it's silly to complain about the aesthetics of 3D prints that are designed for high resolution and having high functionality and strength, but aesthetics is important for me in the prints that I do. So this, this probably isn't, I'm probably not the target market for this, but that doesn't mean that this doesn't have a target market. And, and I'm excited to see powder-based 3D printer coming down in price and being more accessible to people. Who knows? Maybe we'll see one of these show up near you and you can try it out. And I think that would be, I think that that possibility is very cool. I want to thank my friends at Centret for sending me these really cool prints so I can get my hands on some powder-based 3D prints and see what they can do and see how rigid and, and really useful they are. I want to thank you very much for watching. I want to remind you, safety first, and go make something of yourself. See you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.